Goose. Okay, Bajo, it's reboot o'clock. It's always nice to see an old school platformer dug out of the archives and rebooted. And Strider ticks a lot of the right boxes. Mostly they've recaptured his ninja-ness so well. He doesn't walk, he dashes. And instead of jumping, he somersaults. Plus he can climb walls and roofs like a ninjaized Spider-Man. But mostly I'm just glad they kept his iconic sword intact. You can carve most enemies in half before they even know you're there. Later in the game he can reflect laser blasts Jedi style. Plus, he can charge up a heavy slash to cut through enemy shields. Classic ninja. Yeah, I think the speed of the combat and the 2.5D visuals do a really good job of balancing its old school roots mixed with that more modern twist. Mechanically, I think everything gels quite well, but the formula ran out of steam pretty fast for me. The original game was only a half hour long, but it had a cracking pace, taking you from the futuristic city opening into arctic wilderness and dense jungles. That city sequence only lasted five minutes in the original, but here it stretched out to six hours of endless blue rooms. So many blue rooms. <laughs> but I did enjoy those boss encounters. Mixing sword strikes with well-timed energy blasts was always satisfying. The game also felt a bit conflicted to me. I mean, the original was pure action platformer. And there certainly is a lot of that here. But at the same time, it's trying to be this Metroidvania-style exploration platformer, and I'm not sure it does it so well. The maps are huge, and they send you back and forth fetching things to open up new areas. I mean, that just becomes a bit of a chore. I don't think so. I enjoyed finding those secrets, if not for anything else but to hear that iconic collection music. So iconic. Plus, it reminded me a lot of Shadow Complex, which I loved. I also had an issue with the difficulty. It just didn't seem quite right. Levels are packed with enemies that keep respawning, plus they shoot at you from off screen, and I really hate that because you can't avoid being shot to pieces. Yeah, that is frustrating. And instead of finding a way to resolve this, they just gave Strider heaps of health so he soaks up all the damage. Yeah, it just feels like a band-aid. But then after a few hours of mediocrity, they actually give Strider a bunch of really cool moves near the end of the game. Suddenly he can do these awesome double jumps and teleport around while flinging shurikens. It's a shame they padded this game out so much, because when it hits its stride, it's a joy to play. What are you giving it, Hex? Well, I liked a lot of this game's ideas, but they were just too few and far between for me, so I'm giving it five and a half. I found I could forgive most of its flaws because it is a fairly cheap download, and I think that final act is really satisfying. So I gave it six and a half out of ten rubber chickens. And now for his good game debut for 2014, we warmly welcome back Dave Callan with his review of Bravely Default.